Okay, so I'm um, sorry for the interruption and so then we can appreciate the shoulder joint. Yes, so we can see the shoulder joint here and this is a normal shoulder joint. Yes, so this is normal shoulder joint and then we can see this part of the shoulder being white. That shows that we have um, the normal structure of the shoulder. And then if you look at this one, we have this red signal in the shoulder. That shows that the shoulder has been inflamed. So that is adhesive capsulitis, frozen shoulder. Okay, so this is an x-ray showing the structure of the shoulder. We could see, we could see the shoulder joint being reduced in terms of space so we realize that which we mentioned the fact that there could be there could be reduction in the joint as a result of aging so as we age there are structures in the shoulder called ligaments capsules tendons that could depreciate and this could cause the shoulder to reduce and in, fun in function and cause adhesive shoulder that is adhesive capsulitis so this anatomy of the shoulder and so we can see this the clavicle the collarbone is a collarbone and this is the coral cord process it's very important structure and this is the capsule you can appreciate the capsule this is the capsule so when the capsule is inflamed it, we diagnose the patient as adhesive capsulitis when the capsule is inflamed. This is a scar tissue and this is a beza. Yes, so this is the beza. So we mentioned bezaitis in the previous lectures, previous presentation. And this is the scar tissue. So when the shoulder is inflamed and nothing is done about it, it could form a scar. And these are structures that connect the arm. This is called a biceps tendon. So it holds the arm in place and helps movement in the arm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's look at another picture. Uh -huh. So this is the shoulder. This is the capsule. The capsule has been inflamed. And when the capsule is inflamed, after some time, it forms, a, it forms something called fibrosis. That hardens and further limits the movement of the the shoulder and even the arm okay so this is some various things we can talk about so we mentioned some of the factors that cause frozen shoulder that's adhesive capsulitis as being idiopathic and secondary that is primary and secondary so the secondary conditions that we can have tears in some of the structures in the shoulder and then the extrinsic is where we have trauma that is where you have a boxer being blown to the shoulder this will cause inflammation in the capsule and then be diagnosed as adhesive capsulitis we also have contusions that is contusions mean meaning that um we will have um contusion means we have tears in the shoulder region that is the near the capsule or the capsule itself subluxation this is refers to as drop in the shoulder so we could have the shoulder dropping but not fully off to the arm coming down of the shoulder joint but not fully of the shoulder joint so the location is where we have the shoulder that's the forearm no not the forearm that's the arm coming off the shoulder joint and then fractures is where you have break in the bone this could cause also adhesive capsulitis surgery as we talked about could also influence adhesive capsulitis okay so we are we are still talking about frozen shoulder a scientific term referred to as adhesive capsulitis okay so this is um an MRI showing the 
shoulder joint and I'm sure we'll appreciate this better and this is a very detailed anatomy of the shoulder joint that we can have the labrum and then we have the capsule inside we have the cap scapula so I mentioned the back the bone at the back so this is called the scapula and this helps to hold the arm in place and then allows effective movement of the arm and this is the acromion process we have the beza and we have the a muzzle here called the dotted muzzle this helps to move the arm effectively so we're talking about shoulder frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis yes so this is a very good pathology of the condition when you talk about pathology it means the disease itself so we have the shoulder joint, the normal shoulder joints. You can see the space here being very clear and you can see the blue coloring, normal shoulder joints. But when you compare this joint to this joint, you can see that this place is a bit ash and then there is this closeness of this bone to this side, if you can observe it like this. Uh -huh. So this is a capsule. This capsule has been worn off and then we couldn't see it again yes and then you can observe some portions of the capsule there so this sign here that shows that this capsule has been inflamed and formed a scar so there are stages of um deterioration deterioration of the shoulder joint causing adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder it could form a fibrous tissue called a scar and this could further limit functions in the shoulder okay so this is a very good picture of the condition adhesive capsulitis so you can see the scars forming around the shoulder and this could prevent the shoulder being lifted so the person when as a patient to lift the shoulder up the patient cannot lift the shoulder very well it leaves the shoulder just a little bit above and complains of pain 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 yeah so this is a very good presentation so you can see the capsule here yes you can see it very here so when the patient is injured it could cause inflammation of the capsule okay so this is another picture so this is a very diagrammatic presentation of the shoulder so you can see the redness here means the place has been inflamed and coursing very soon so these are the various exercises that could be done for the patient we're we'll talking about it very soon and um, this is also anatomy of the shoulder we can see it very very well you can see the joint there so this is the glenoid cavity so inside there we have the capsule capsule so the capsule helps to keep the arm this, this is called the arm the humus or the arm in place so it, it fixes it into the shoulder joint so this is the anatomy of the shoulder this is the called the scapula that helps to connect to the arm by this joint called the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint and this helps for the arm to move up and down sideways backwards so when this one this joint is not effective you could have pain or even lots of movement in the arm okay so this is also a very good presentation of the shoulder joints yes another one so when the shoulder is inflamed we have folding shoulder and could affect other structures also around the joints you could have tendons being affected you could have ligament being affected so just one condition could have a ripple effect on the other structures in the shoulder so this is also a very good presentation so we can have the fibrosis that is the hardening of this structure this side here and this is a normal shoulder joint you could see the blue color here that shows that the joint is intact and this ash structure shows that there is inflammation and there is a fibrosis that is hardening of the part of the shoulder. 
So when I ask the patient to raise their hands up, because of the limited movement here, the patient complains of pain, 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 and can't perform his activities very effectively. Okay, so this is a shoulder, you can see the anatomy of the shoulder. Okay, so these are various. Okay, so the basic components of the shoulder are the scapula, the clavicle, and then the arm connected by other structures. We have muscles, we have tendons, we have bases, we have other structures. Okay, so this is the normal shoulder joint. This is the inflamed shoulder joint called frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis. Okay, so we can appreciate more here. You can see the shoulder being inflamed. I could see some white chest covering that shows that they have been hardening. That is fibrosis of the shoulder joint, and this could limit movements in the shoulder joint. Okay, so this is a very very good anatomy of the condition. So you could see this reddish shine that shows that there's injury to the shoulder joint. And then you can see the reddening. That means that there's some blood flow there, and the reddening is because their their vessel, their blood vessels are on the shoulder. So in case there's trauma there, and the vessels are best, blood oozes to the shoulder joint, and this causes the place to look reddish. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the, an X-ray of the shoulder. You could see a space in the shoulder here. You can see the space in the shoulder here, but you can see that this space is quite reduced. Either this one is also reduced, and so the reduction could imply that the place has been reduced in terms of the structure there, that is the capsule, and this could cause the medical practitioner to diagnose the condition to be adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder so this is another picture anatomy of the shoulder anatomy of the shoulder and you could see this presentation the patient complains of pain 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 okay so these are some pictures also okay, okay. so um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we've seen so many pictures of the frozen shoulder and then we have memories of it as of now okay so some of the risk factors of Frozen shoulder is diabetes. You can have stroke. You could have a thyroid disorder. That is when you can have inflammation of the thyroid. You can have hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. And we could have an injury to the shoulder, as we talked about earlier on. Yes. So just a, a reminder. We're talking about a condition called frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder. And could have also a condition called avascular necrosis. That is where we have poor blood supply to the shoulder. This will cause stiffness of the shoulder and could cause the stiffness of the shoulder, known as frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis. There are so many causes and the risk factors. Um, so then we are zooming in to talk about the clinical presentation so how would you know that someone has got frozen shoulder well it's very visible so when someone has frozen shoulder when you're going to lift their hands up there's limitation in the movement of the arm especially lifting the hands up like this the patient when you ask the patient to lift his hands up the patient cannot lift the hands up the patient does this tries to compensate with the whole body and lift it up like this so this could, this could imply that the patient might have had injury to the shoulder joint, but then it's still inconclusive in terms of diagnosis. There are other various clinical procedures that we go through to firmly confer or conclude that the person has had frozen shoulder. We have other tests. We have. Um, the use of an x-ray or use of an MRI which we saw in the in a, in a previous seconds ago of the MRI showing the shoulder reduction in the space and then we can say the person has had frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis okay so 
some of the presentations are that the person cannot button the shirt, especially in females, they're unable to button the back of their dresses. And then this could infer that the person has a frozen shoulder. Also, the person has difficulty in terms of sleeping at night. Yes, so the person comes to hospital and says, Oh, in the night I can't sleep, my shoulder, my shoulder, I feel pains in my shoulder. And then it could mean we can zoom in to talk about the diagnosing the patient as having frozen shoulder. Okay, so then we are come to talk about the faces of frozen shoulder. We have three main phases of frozen shoulder. We have one, the acute phase, or the freezing phase, or the painful phase. And this phase lasts for two to nine months. Two to nine months. The acute, the freezing, or the or the painful phase. So one on the phases of frozen shoulder, and it lasts for about two to nine months. And this stage, we have very in very severe pains in the shoulder and this occurs mainly at night so at night the patient complains of pain in the shoulder yes so this is the first phase the second phase is where it becomes quite a bit intense also known as the adhesive or the stiffening phase or the frozen phase the adhesive the frozen or the stiffening phase where the shoulder has quite limited movement as compared to the first phase. So the first phase, the patient is able to raise the hands up, but there's pain inside, especially at night. But with this case, there's much, much, much pain and there's increased stiffness in the shoulder. And this is called the frozen phase or the adhesive or the stiffening phase. And this lasts for between four to a year, that is 12 months. And that means that the number of months of the pain complaints by the patient could infer the stage at which the um, frozen shoulder has reached. So if the patient comes to the therapist or the medical doctor and says, oh, this pain has been with me for about a year now, I could say that the patient has adhesive phase or the frozen or the stiffening phase of the frozen shoulder and if the patient has had it for about two months or less than nine months you can see the patient has had adhesive has had um freezing or painful or the acute phase and then the next phase is where we have the very intense phase in a severe form and then we called resolution or thawing phase and this will last for about from five months upwards to two years so this is very severe phase where we have and um, the, the, there is very stiff pain, stiff shoulder lifting of the hands up that's the shoulders up is very limited the patient has very limited movement in the shoulder and this could help us diagnose the condition as the thawing or the resolution phase of the frozen shoulder Yes. So in this this um, stage of the frozen shoulder affects mainly forty percent of the patients who complain of frozen shoulder. It means that majority of patients tend to have the resolution phase. This is because some people manage the condition and don't report to the medical facilities as early as possible. So they tend to have the shoulder being frozen and difficult to manage. So when you have pain in your shoulder, it's very advisable for you to report to your medical practitioner, your physiotherapist, as early as possible. And as I mentioned, the first phase, the patient complains of pain and difficulty in terms of sleeping. It's very important to note this. And so these are the various phases. So the patient complains of pain, limited movement, and difficulty in carrying activities such as bottom shades especially from the back so look about the anatomy of the shoulder and then the various structures around the shoulder and then we're going to talk about the treatment of conditions such as this shoulder that is frozen shoulder or adhesive papillitis or periarthritis so 
three very important alternatives of this condition being diagnosed by doctor or the physiotherapist is frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis so any of them can be you can mention any of them as the condition okay so when we talk about treatment before we talk about treatment we talk about assessment so what are we supposed to look out for before we can diagnose the condition first of all we're going to ask the patient the complaints what the patient feels how the patient feels the intensity of the pain and when the, 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 the pain being felt started so these are questions that the doctor will ask or the physiotherapist will ask to be able to get more information to diagnose and effectively treat this condition so we ask about the previous history and then the pain distribution is it from the neck is it from the shoulder itself is it from the arm yes and this will help us to effectively treat this condition and then the doctor or the physiotherapist is going to ask you that what causes the pain what movements do you do to cause the pain to be more intense or aggravated so we're going to also observe the movement of the shoulder so if there's limited movement of the arm in terms of raising of the arms up it will also give us a more uh, better that's a better diagnosis of the condition okay so these are various assessments that we do we have various tests you have special tests that helps us to diagnose the condition as physical therapist also to be able to treat the condition very effectively so we have the impingement test so impingement test so we have that one to, to be able to diagnose the condition and help our patients so when a physical therapist asks the patients to put the hands down we can press the shoulder this way and then this helps us also to diagnose this condition as adhesive capillitis and they are very important one important term or important process called the capsular pattern used by physical therapist and this helps us to be able to diagnose this condition as frozen shoulder so the capsular pattern is mainly external rotation abduction and internal rotation so when we talk about external rotation it means bringing the shoulders up so when a physical therapist sees externally rotate your shoulder it means move your shoulder this way like this out and when he says abduct it means move the shoulders up across this way when he says internally rotate it means turn the shoulder inside uh -huh. so these are some of the various scientific things that the physical therapist will use and um, so by the capsular pattern a physical therapist can be able to improve the early diagnosis of the condition called frozen shoulder or adhesive capillitis or periarthritis okay so there are so many structures in the shoulder we have ligaments we have um vessels in the shoulder okay so then after the condition is diagnosed there are other investigations such as the mri the x-ray or a ct scan that would also give us a very good picture of the shoulder and then we can appreciate this condition called shoulder that is frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis okay so um various tests or special tests that we also go through could have the shoulder impingement test yes and this could also help us to be able to appreciate this condition yes okay so thank you we are still talking about frozen shoulder frozen shoulder and um we talk about the assessment and how to diagnose the condition and then now we have okay let me talk about this. we talk about shoulder impediment test we also have a shoulder structure so when you have the shoulder the patient to raise the shoulder like this the patient complains of pain around the shoulder and this could also infer one to have shoulder that is frozen shoulder or periarthritis or adhesive capsulitis 
okay so now we're talking to talk about the treatment so first of all in everything every medical practitioner seeks to manage the conditions before attempting to treat surgically okay so first of all we manage the condition conservatively and this means that we have to report to the hospital as early as possible when we have conditions relating to the shoulder so that we can treat them very 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 early but the instance where we fail to report to the medical practitioner or the physiotherapist then we have no option than to go through a surgical procedure yes so when we report early we can go through um we can go through management such as heat so a physical therapist will go through management such as heat so using warm therapy so we get we have something called hot pack so we put hot pack at the shoulder to relieve the pain in the shoulder and also if there's inflammation that is swelling around the shoulder or the capsule is inflamed that is at the acute stage it helps to reduce the inflammation or the swelling around the shoulder Also, we have a device we call the infrared. Infrared. So it's a machine that we use that helps also relieve pain in the shoulder as physical therapist. So when we do all these things, we could do a massage around the shoulder. Also, this helps to improve circulation and also help to move the shoulder through an increasing range of motion. So when we are done with all these, we also go through various exercises. So when the condition is reported early first of all we're going to do this or we're going to ice so depending on the extent or the time frame of this condition we reported we apply ice so if it's the first three days or the first week or the first three weeks specifically the first three days we apply ice to reduce the pain because it's a very early stage but after three weeks going when you go to the, to the physical therapist or the physio or the medical doctor, we're going to apply heat. So the physiotherapist goes through heat procedure and then applies the tens and then goes through various exercises. So we going through various exercises to treating this condition called frozen shoulder or adhesive capillaries. So it goes to exercise such as so we have wall exercises so if this is the wall the wall in front of me the patient goes to exercise such as raising the hands up so move the hands up to the painful position and then brings the hands down goes to the and move the hand down and this helps to improve the shoulder function and the shoulder range of motion also we have the cold man exercises so the patient lies on the stomach and brings the shoulder out so as the patient lies on the bed bring if the if it's the left shoulder the patient lies on the bed and bring the left shoulder off the bed and move the shoulder across to moves across like this in bed and this helps to improve movement in the shoulder so this is called cold man exercises and then also we have auto assisted exercises so the patient joins the arms to get the hands together and raises both hands up and down up and down so this helps also to improve the motion in the shoulder so there are various exercises that we go through we have assistive exercises such as getting a long stick so you hold both stick together and then move the stick up and down up and down this helps also to improve the motion this is done in, in the joint function of the shoulder then we, um, we have surgical procedures 
we have physical procedures that is physical therapy this is using of exercises to boost treat this condition so this is a summary of what we call frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis so for the last time we're going to look at the picture okay so we'll be looking at the for the last time the pictures of how the frozen shoulder looks like for for some of us who were not present so that we can see the frozen shoulder okay yes so yeah so this is the frozen shoulder yes uh -huh. so we can see them very clearly very clearly so you can see the shoulder being inflamed yes okay 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 so thank you very much yes i'm sure we've learned a lot from this discussion frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis yes so frozen shoulder yes um please any anyone anyone with questions as yes, yeah, questions are fully welcome any question any question any question we've had a wonderful time discussing this topic frozen shoulder and i'm sure that we've learned a lot we've learned a lot we've learned a lot there are more to talk about there are more to talk about but um, if you have any questions please your questions are welcome your questions are welcome all questions are welcome yes very grateful for us to answer your questions yes please any question any question any question any question please any question um any question please yes um questions are welcome um any question please yes um yeah questions are welcome so we're talking about frozen shoulder um any question please i can see angela i can see ajua i can see juan i can see daniel I can see Genevieve. I can see yeah, so many people. Yeah, yeah, on the discussion. Is any question? Any question? Any question? Um, it looks like we don't have any question today. Yeah, any question? Just some few minutes, a minute or two for questions. Any question, please? Okay, any question? Any question? Yeah, any question? So, you talked about frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis. Um, any question, please? Yes, um, it looks like there's no question. Okay, so thank you very much for your time, and I believe that we've learned a lot. This topic was frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis. So the next topic is golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow. Yes, I'm sure that we'll learn a lot from the 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 the, 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 the next topic. Golfer's elbow. Yes, I'm sure we are anticipating a lot. And kindly share the the, 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 the the flyers when they come on. Yes, uh, I believe that we will, we, will, we will be very very honored for us for other people also to be able to um, learn from us. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, the next topic is golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow. Yes. Um. Yes. So my name is Richard Cote. Yes, and I believe that. We we'll learn a lot, yes, in the next topic. The topic is golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow. Yes. Um any question please? Any question? Yes. We are still waiting for the question. I'm sure that we we'll learn a lot in the next topic. I'm happy and very glad to 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 to, to lead in the discussion. And I believe that we'll have a blessed evening, we'll have a blessed night. Today is the 11th of October 2020 and I believe tomorrow starts another week. Have a blessed week.
take care um, we love you so it's all about recall health international foundation sponsoring this presentation and if you have any if you have any contribution to us if you have any suggestions if you have any anything to to add up we can call on us our number is zero five four zero five one four zero nine two zero five four zero five one four zero nine two in any support for our presentation to make it better any suggestions in the comments is welcome thank you very much have a blessed evening take care we love you we love you we love you yes we thank god for a wonderful presentation amen